Jeff, it is always good to see you. Why don't we start? So much, so much to talk about here. Why don't we start with the open AI situation? This looks like a colossal screw up uh, of uh, really of board uh, and governance. It, it really is, Tyler. And that is a pretty daunting list of issues that uh, we have till dinner time, don't we? Because yeah. I think uh, <laughs> well, the only thing to add to your list is bringing peace to the Middle East, I think, and, and curing cancer. But you're so right. Uh, is that you and I on air discussed when Steve Jobs, we're old enough for that, when he left. We didn't have this mass exodus. Mark Hurd at Oracle, I had done some work with the board at, at HP around that time. And of course, you and I talked about Travis Kalanick when he left Uber. We didn't see anything like this. This was this kind of affection for a tech leader leaving is, is remarkable. And of course, who could be more popular than Steve Jobs? But Sam Altman's affection is amazing. For this board to be so unprepared, so uh, so poor at articulating what the reason was that even the the replacement interim interim is now questioning why should he stay uh, if he doesn't even know uh, what the reason was for the for the exit. We're seeing that there's a good deal of confusion and good for Satya. Is, and, uh, yeah, is the winner no. Satya Nadella and 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 Microsoft, or, or in the short term, if they end up owning? Uh, effectively open AI, and they have a 49% stake in it right now, is it a short-term win or a loss? Because they're spending money faster than they're taking in money. The clear winner uh, is uh, is definitely Microsoft on this. The, the $13 billion or so that they put in they could write off this company. You know, he's re he's reached uh, all time highs in the value of Microsoft stock. Last year at our CEO summit, uh, you may recall, uh, we and at Fortune magazine also in a piece I wrote, we we made him the CEO of the year because his stock was up in part because his stock was up a thousand percent since he became CEO in 2014. It's doubled since then. He's now up two thousand percent. An incredibly successful uh, series of acquisitions, focusing on innovation, focusing on, on trust. So he has a very attractive culture to bring these 700 plus employees on board if that's the way to go from from uh, from OpenAI. If yeah. not, he has a great relationship with OpenAI, but he was so so nimble. I think Mark, Mark Benioff was impressive that he tried to get them over to Salesforce. Right. But wow, Satya Nadella, he didn't care, uh, you know, how this is going to work out. He's got a home for them. He provided a safety net. A huge amount of credibility for, for Microsoft. I think a lot of people are very impressed at how he's handled this, Jeff. But I, I still would question just how well those employees or Sam himself would do inside Microsoft. You know, if he stays, do they have to build almost like a separate structure to kind of keep that initiative going the way that it was before this all blew up? Something so that they don't just get subsumed into the corporate morass and kind of, you know, to change an entity that dramatically is to change it fundamentally. And this was a fundamentally successful product, no matter what was happening on the governance side. You know, uh, Microsoft has a history of some acquisitions, Kelly, that completely support your point, where they destroyed what they bought. Uh, sadly, this has happened with large, a lot of large tech companies that have done this. In this case, with the 50 acquisitions last year that he brought on board, and we, we have seen, uh, in, in, of course, recently in the gaming business, that's pretty exciting. But just last year, a nuance, he's been able to bring in significant sized companies and $20 billion sized deals and hold on to the people, hold on to the innovation. It's a very good question. But they were outsourcing or at least partnering a lot of that AI development with uh, open uh, AI as it was. So it isn't that you're going to have people that feel that they've been preempted. They already had that relationship going. So I don't think it should be a problem. It's a very good question. I don't think it'll be a problem. Let's switch and talk a little bit about Elon Musk. Um, and I, I guess I, I don't know how to phrase the question. How much damage has been done to the brands that, that Elon Musk oversees? And I'm thinking not so much uh, X, because X is its own... I don't know how you could damage it more. I mean, I, it, it, it is what it is, and everybody knows what it is, Jeff. But I'm thinking of Tesla. I'm thinking of SpaceX. I'm thinking of contracts that, that he has with the government. Um, uh, how, how damaging has this episode been? If you look at that portfolio, um, is uh, anytime we talk about Elon Musk, we're going to get a lot of blowback uh, after the show. People saying, oh, you don't believe in freedom of expression. Well, he doesn't apparently believe in it either. He censors things that are critical on X that he doesn't like, and he goes over to sue them if he doesn't like it. And furthermore, as a private citizen, sure, he's allowed to say whatever he wants. 
And if he's foolish enough to do it as the CEO of a private company with public company advertisers, as you put up there, all this list of great advertisers that have pulled out, including happily, you know, uh, Comcast, uh, uh, you know, NBC being one of them as well as uh, Apple and Microsoft, uh, rather an IBM and, and, and Oracle and things is um, that's very damaging as a private company, but as a public company, because he also has quite a, you know, with, with Tesla among his seven other CEO positions, it's crazy to be uh, damaging the brand, damaging the credibility. Certainly, we, we've seen that there's a whole generation of people buying Mercedes, Mercedes and BMWs that had some trouble after World War II. You can't go around looking like you're on the wrong side of Charlottesville. Some of the things he was saying about, you know, uh, replacement of white people uh, and attacking Jews for it and things like that is how could you be that crazy that that really puts you absolutely on the wrong side of history and 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 uh, promoting this kind of bigotry in a in a media outlet of of course is crazy but imagine being Linda Yaccarino your mm -hmm. former colleague of course in the world of Comcast if even Comcast is now pulled out from advertising with her what a, what how difficult that was. The rumors were that and reports were that she didn't even know about the rebranding of Twitter to X right. until almost the rest of us did.